the circus, huh? Stop that. What's the matter with you? The way you whistled at you was an insult. I'm tired of your jealousy. Now behave yourself. Well, so you're coming to see us, eh? Oh, what a pretty little girl. But on behalf of the entire population of our fair township, welcome to Virginia City. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. For myself, for my troop, and for my sister, Donna Luisa. Ben! Ben Cosnight! <laughs> <laughs> now, this whole trip from San Francisco is worth all the inconvenience. Well, I was wondering if you're going to have time to say hello to an old friend. Right. My delight is beyond expression. Oh, ten years now. Isn't it? <laughs> ten years. Oh, Guido. My son, Joseph. Ah, no, Guido, what else? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, Bettina, Carlo, I have the honor to present my old and good friend, Ben Cartwright, also his son, Joseph. Signorina Bettina Anselmi, Signor Carlo Alfieri. How do you do? Oh, Donna Luisa, you remember Ben Cartwright? Who could forget Donna Ben Luisa. Cartwright? <laughs> it is such a pleasure to see you again. How again. wonderful to see you. This is my son, Joseph Donna Luisa. Ah. Now, this is what I've done. As soon as I heard that you were coming to town, I canceled your hotel reservations. My two older boys are away in a cattle buying trip, and, and there's uh, lots of room at the Ponderosa, so you're all coming out there to stay with us. Oh, yeah, just, like that, just like that. Just like that. Magnifico. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> this stuff with you wherever you go? Uh, but of course. How else could I satisfy the inner man? And if the inner man is not content, then the outer man is not fit to inhabit a civilized society. <laughs> a pinch of oregano. The finest from Greece. A pinch? No more. <laughs> it's like the garlic. One wishes only the perfume, not a suffocation. <laughs> you know, it is not everyone I would give my prized family recipes to. Tonight, my old friend, you will dine on a caponata di melanzani and a pasta di sardi, such as you have not eaten since you were at my villa in Palermo. Yeah, well, I remember when I was at your villa in Palermo, my clothes fit just a bit too snugly. <laughs> well, first it has to simmer a little. Well, while it's simmering, why don't we uh, have a little masala? I still have a couple of bottles up from that case I brought back with me. <laughs> <laughs> so Ira gets sick on the vinegar and Horse ends up winning the contest anyway. Oh, <laughs> Well, what's so funny? I'm just telling about the time I entered horse in that flapjack eating contest. Oh, yeah. Well, let's not bring up those painful memories again. <laughs> well, let us not spoil my melanzani. It'll be ready in a little while, so I suggest you ladies get dressed for dinner, huh? Of course. No. Oh. Come along, Jack. Uh, Joe? Signor Alfieri? Yeah, thanks, Bob. No, thank you. Uh, if you will excuse me, I also have to change. Uh, Sicilians and temperament. They go together like food and wine. Oh, I don't know. You're Sicilian. And uh, I've never noticed very much temperament in you. No, that's true, of course. But... Huh? <laughs> Salute, eh? Salute. Salute. Petina. Petina, I, I want to talk with you. Please. I don't like the way you say that. Petina, please. Come in. <sighs> 
what is the matter now? The same as always. Does, does it give you pleasure to, to give me such pain? Pain, pain, pain. Carlo, it seems to me you use that expression much too often. How do I give you pain? Well, you know without my telling you. Do you think I'm blind? The way you're, you're flirting with the one they call Little Joe? Because I am being courteous to the son of our host, your insane jealousy calls it flirting. Now that... I can't stand this much longer. You I... sound like we were married. That's what I want. Carlo, Carlo, please, don't suffocate me with your love. What is the matter with you? I love you, but... I... I, I must feel free. Don't you understand? Free? Free to do what? Huh? To flirt with every man you see. That is what you think I'm doing. All right. From now on, I will do just as you accuse me. Tell the truth. Have you ever dined more royally? <laughs> well, to tell the truth, not since you cooked for me in Palermo. Ah, you see why I love this Ben Cartwright. I ask for a compliment with outrageous bluntness, and from his magnificent heart, he gives me willingly what I ask. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Ben Cartwright. My brother is as always a spoiled and mischievous child. Pay no attention to her. She speaks as she does only because she brought me up when our parents died. When I have a white beard down to here, I would always be to my beloved sister an infant. <laughs> Well, for an infant, you didn't do too badly in that dark alley in Palermo. Ah, that was nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, if it wasn't for that nothing, I wouldn't be sitting right here tonight. What do you mean? That's how I met Guido. Yeah, I was going back to the hotel. It was dark late at night, and I lost my bearings and wound up in an alley. And there were two fellas there with uh, stilettos, and they came at me, and for a little while it was uh, nip and tuck, until suddenly there was Guido. Jumping at them, swinging away. And I tell you, between the two of us, we made short shrift of those two, didn't we? That was a fight, my friend. Now, that was a fight. And how did you pay me back, huh? Listen, all of you. He challenged me to a game of chess. This ingrate, who now so charmingly poses as our host, do you know what he did to me? He checkmated me in seven moves. Seven! Hey! <laughs> but never again. Over the years, ever since that disastrous night, I have developed a unique method of play. I challenge you to a return match, my friend. Anytime. Tonight? Right now. Good. <laughs> As usual, I have eaten too much. Well, why don't we go outside and get some air? That sounds wonderful. Come on, Guido, let's not hold up the game. Which hand? Uh, that one. So, you have the advantage of the first move. But I warn you, it will not affect the outcome. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Crazy move is that, opening with your night. Crazy like a fox. And I am ready to spring the trap that you are headed for. Hmm. Well, take your time, take your time. Hmm.
Good night. Good night. Sleep well. How you doing? Is your room all right? Fine, thank you. Uh, did uh, Bettina tell you that uh, she and I are practically engaged to be married? No, she didn't mention it. Well, let me tell you then. We are. Congratulations. Uh, now that you know, I must insist. Leave it alone. Oh, what do you mean, insist? Let me put it in, a, in another way. I'm warning you. <laughs> Look, I think you're making a big thing out of nothing. Just stay away from Bettina. God, your queen is in danger. Yeah, so I see. <laughs> take your time. Take all the time you want. This will take some time to figure out. I tell you what, then. Suppose we continue this tomorrow. If you don't mind, I'd like to retire. The food and the wine, the long trip, I'm rather tired. And I have to set up the act tomorrow morning. Oh, certainly. I think I'll just stay put here and try to figure out what you're up to. Good night, Ben. Good night. say goodnight and ask how you felt. I feel fine. Why? Well, it was a long trip. I thought if you were tired, I could postpone the practice tomorrow. No. I, I will be ready. That is, if Carlo will. Carlo? We had another quarrel about his insane jealousy. I don't know what to do about him. Oh, little one. Do not bother your pretty head with all the Carlos in this world. They are just young boys spouting puppy love. Someday, when you are ready, you will know real love. And meanwhile, I must endure Carlo's moves. I told you, forget about Carlo. <laughs> now you go to bed and get a good rest, you hear? Yes, master. <laughs> oh, Guido, what would we all do without you? <laughs> good night. Who is it? Borelli. Enter. Good. You're getting ready for rehearsal tomorrow, huh? I'll be ready, as always. Mm hmm. Hold out your hand. You call that being ready, as always? It's Bettina. She, she's driving me crazy. And I love her so much. And she tortures me. She tortures me constantly. Always flirting with other men. Tonight, it was... Cartwright? Right. Yes. Yes, right under my nose, in front of everybody there. Listen, Carlo. Bettina's old enough to choose her own man. Perhaps you're not the one. Perhaps you should give her up. No, no, don't say that. But I must. Our lives depend on each other, each other's hands. And I cannot afford instability in the act. If you cannot solve your personal problems, I will have to look for a more mature, less romantic aerialist. Oh, no. No, the, the trapeze is my life. I thought Bettina was your life. Uh, I need both. <laughs> well, unfortunately, few men get everything they want. So make up your mind, Carlo. Either settle these rivalries once and for all, or give up Petina. I'll give you until we open in Virginia City. In the meantime, get yourself under control. Now remember, we set up the rigging and start rehearsal tomorrow.
Just great. I couldn't believe it. Boy, that looks like fun. Guido, careful. After all these years, you're still afraid, huh? I'm always afraid. He's too old for the trapeze. in pretty good shape to me. He should have retired long ago. I've told him and told him, but he won't listen. Well, why won't he retire? I don't know. Unless he's trying to punish himself for the death of Angelina. Angelina? Oh, I forgot you haven't seen Guida for years. Angelina was a young idealist he married. Together they performed the Salto Mortale, their death-defying leap, until one night in Seville, only three months after their marriage, Guido failed to catch her, and she fell to her death. He has been blaming himself ever since. Only he would listen to reason, give up the trapeze to the younger men. Hey, really? Magnifico, eh? Beautiful. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> right. Well, little Joe? Do you think you would like to try the trapeze? Oh, no, not me. I have enough trouble getting on and off horses, let alone a trapeze. <laughs> that reminds me. I have a favor to ask of you. Anything. I have never ridden a horse. Would you teach me? Sure. When do you want to start? Right now? Okay, but you can't ride in that. Let's get back to the Ponderosa and get you something a little more appropriate. All right. I think you did real well for the first time. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Even with my handicap? <laughs> Thank you for the lesson, little Joe. Well, believe me, that was my pleasure. I, uh, I guess I better put up the horses. Touch. Game still alive. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Sure. I warned you to leave Petina alone. I can't fight you now while you're a guest in the house. I'm challenging you to a duel. 
Don't you understand? If you're not a coward, you will accept. What, are you serious? Never more so. Are you men enough to defend your honor? <laughs> oh, come on. And now, this is pretty silly, isn't it? I fail to see the humor. Do you accept or not? A duel. All right, fine. I, I have the choice of weapons, right? Correct. Okay, I choose fists. I agree. Name the time. This afternoon, about an hour. That is acceptable. Hey, now, one more condition. It's just between you and me. You don't tell anybody about it. Agreed? Agreed. All right, I'll meet you by the barn in an hour. I'll have the horses ready. neglected to warn you. In addition to being an expert on the trapeze, I'm an expert with my fists. All right, expert. Let's see what you got. We both get in a couple of good legs. Come on, let's forget it. Now you made me mad. I came across him by the east pasture on my way back from town. Had that stuck in him. It's my knife. I don't know, Ben. He's got at most an outside chance. Fortunately, the knife was deflected by a rib. Is there anything we can do? No. It's out of our hands, Joe. 
But somebody should stay with him. I, I want to. Please. Fine. Let me know if he regains consciousness. I'll be in the kitchen. I could use some coffee. Fury getting along. He's still alive, that's about all I can say. Well, that's something. At least it won't be a murder charge. But I am going to have to book you on assault. Now, come on, Roy. You know, I didn't have any more to do with that than you did. Wait a minute. You admit to the fight and was your knife. Somebody stole my knife. Uh, Roy. Hi, Ben. You don't believe that Joe's guilty of anything? No, Ben, I don't really believe that little Joe here is guilty of something like this, but What's until. That? Until Alfieri regains consciousness, if he does, and is able to tell us exactly what happened, I'm going to have to do my job. Well, of course, you have to do your job. Well, we'll know what happened when Alfieri comes to. Joe, I think you better go along with Roy. All right. Well, thanks, Ben. And you will let me know if there's any change in his condition? Of course I will. Thanks. when words are, well, what can I say except you have my sympathy. Thank you, Guido. I just don't understand. Who could have done such a thing to that young fellow? Why? You may think it a foolish thing to suggest, but uh, to take your mind off your worries, let's, uh, let's resume our chess game. Just standing around waiting. We can get rid of this. <laughs> I believe it is my move. I didn't give that too much thought. I told you, I've spent a long time improving my game. You must be pretty confident. <laughs> I am going to get some fresh air. Dona Luisa is staying by Carlo. My move should keep you occupied for a bit, so if you'll excuse me, I, uh, I want to talk to Patina. Ashamed of dear Bettina. But I do. I, I teased him. Constantly made him jealous. And because he behaved like a schoolboy. He is young, immature, unaware of real beauty. But I should have understood. I am young too. But you're a woman, and a very beautiful woman. And you will need and seek maturity when. when Carlo goes to his maker. Oh, don't say that! We must face the truth. Mia cara. My love. Guido. Che cosa c'è? I must speak to you. Now. A 
go away. I still haven't figured out your strategy. But I will. Well, take your time. I'll check on Carlo. How dare you summon me that way? What are you up to, my little brother? What kind of talk is that? Don't try to put me off. I know you too well. Don't forget I was both mother and father to you. I know every beat of your heart. And I know you for what you really are. And what is that, my beloved sister? A child. A, a willful, spoiled child who thinks only of what he wants. What is it you want now? I don't know what you're talking about. Guido. Guido, don't you know I speak to you for your own good? Don't you know I love you as a mother loves her child? Will you stop calling me a child? Don't raise your voice to me. You resent my calling you a child, but you are a child. Oh. That is your genius on the trapeze and your weakness in life. Oh, Guido, I have seen the way you look at Bettina when you think no one is observing. I have seen the desire in your eyes. You talk like a fool. Bettina is like my own daughter. Oh, no. What I say is the truth. Admit it, you hope to have Petina for your own. Why? To replace Angelina? Shut up! Not until I have finished. Angelina is dead. Dead. Quiet! Fala finita! God will punish you if Carlo dies. Must I strike you to make you stop? Go ahead. Do what you wish with me. No. Leave Carlo alone, Guido. Leave Bettina alone. It is too late for you. You are too old. I hate you. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Well, Guido, I must say you've changed over the years. In what way, my friend? Well, uh, in this chess game, for instance. You become a player of daring and risk. Well, what is wrong with daring and risk, so long as you win? Well, nothing, of course, depends upon what you want to win and why. <laughs> You've done very well for yourself. You're a man of world renown, at the very top of your profession, a risky profession. Don't you think it's about time you... you thought of retiring? Retiring? Why, oh, Ben, I feel as young as a, as a boy of 20. <laughs> no. No, age isn't the way you feel, Ben. You surround yourself with youth and you stay young. Well, I... I enjoyed being young, and now I enjoy being the age I am. Yes, but you have a family. And I have nothing. Only my sister, Donna Luisa, of course. Yes, I... I understand that since we were last together, you... Uh, you had a wife. Angelina? Uh, my beautiful young Angelina. You must be very lonely without her. Lonely? My friend, you don't know the torture, the anguish of such loneliness. It is, it is more than I can endure, and I will not stand for it any longer. I will not. Have you, uh, have you thought of what you might do? Do? <laughs> I'll get married again, of course. Another beautiful girl, like Bettina? Well, 
Why not, Bettina? No reason. It, it depends on Bettina. Well, Bettina's a woman. She needs to be told what to do. I'm afraid you've lost a queen. You moved right into my trap. <laughs> I sacrificed a knight and captured a queen. <laughs> yeah, that trap worked very well, Guido. Very well indeed. Well, I guess without this queen of mine, the game's pretty well over. I'm afraid so. And if you'll excuse me, I must get some rest. Remember, we give our first performance tomorrow night. Oh, are you going on without Carlo? Even without Carlo. I am the star of the act. The others are replaceable. Sacrifice a knight to capture a queen. see anybody, you didn't hear anybody, nothing. Oh, it's just like I told you. As far as I know, Carlo and I were the only ones out there. And I didn't have the knife with me, Roy, because I know I left it in my room. Well, it's obvious that you weren't the only ones out there. But anybody around the Ponderosa could have stole your knife. Yeah. Quite a chess game. Quite a chess game. Oh, what's chess got to do with it? Oh, Joe. <laughs> Sometimes you learn a great deal about a chess player when he's willing to sacrifice a knight to capture a queen. Borelli has been playing you and Carlo against each other all along. Borelli? I thought he was a friend of yours. Yeah, well, I guess he was. But the years change a man, I guess. Particularly when he's afraid of growing old. Ben, you think that Morelli done it, but you ain't got a shred of proof of that. Roy, I think I can prove my point. With Hoss's help. Hoss? Yeah. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I rode into town last night and sent him a wire. He'll be along in the next stage. Morelli's never seen him. Roy, I want you to help me set up a trap for him. Before his performance, tonight. Borelli likes to play games. Well, we're gonna teach him a game that he won't forget. Give me a piece of paper. I wanna write a note for Haas to send to him. Joe, don't worry. Partner, I'm glad to see you got my note. <laughs> I don't reckon I'd even recognize you, but I know you're Borelli. I asked you to come only because you aroused my curiosity. What is it you uh, want to see me about? Well, now, uh, I thought I made that downright clear. Now, would you like me to pay a little visit to the local sheriff? <laughs> come to the point. I have to give a performance within an hour. All right, Mr. Clown, I'll lay it right on the line for you and make it real simple. Then you can stop this fancy de -daddling. So happens that yesterday afternoon I was taking myself a little nap up there on one of them big pine trees on the Ponderosa. When all of a sudden there's all this racket, see? That's what woke me up. Two fellas fighting. One of them whooped the other one, jumped on his horse and ran off and left that other poor fella just laying there. He just sort of laid down and passed out. And then all of a sudden, the strangest thing happened. Would you like for me to continue? Proceed. Then all of a sudden, there was this other fellow. He must have been hiding out there behind one of them trees all along, because he comes sneaking up about this time, see? He sneaked right up on that poor fellow laying there, and you know what he done? He got himself a knife in his fist. Enough! I don't 
uh, I don't hear too good out of this here. I said, what do you want? Well, now, I've been hankering to take myself a little trip, see a little bit of Mexico. And I sure would hate to go down there short of cash, if, if you know what I mean. How much? Huh? How much? Oh, I, I figure 5,000 gold. Impossible. I could not raise that money in so short a time. My, oh, my, that's, that's a shame. Yes, sir, that's, that's a terrible shame. I figure that fella Ben Cartwright would pay that and then some to get that boy his out of jail, don't you reckon? <laughs> all right, all right. I have no choice in the matter. You will have to wait until I wire my bankers in New York. Huh? I said you will have to wait until I wire my bankers in New York. Fair enough, partner. Salto mortale. Enrico, go up there. Before I leave, I want you to understand. I did not know my brother was guilty. It is true I suspected it. But I could not face it. Do you believe me? Of course I believe you, Donna Luisa. I can't tell you how sorry I am about everything. It is I who am sorry. Then... Goodbye, Ben Cartwright. Goodbye, Dolores. You take care of yourself. <laughs> See, I've learned my lesson. I'm no longer jealous, I think. <laughs> 